Today, I want to talk about our graph toolkit. We've covered a lot of our components already, the person components, the people, uh, tasks, agenda, to do. Uh, today, I want to focus on something that is really near and dear to my heart, which is files. Coming from a, uh, a strong SharePoint background, I've been working with files in SharePoint, OneDrive, and Teams forever. And I'm excited today to showcase how we're thinking these should be handled within the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Before we go any further, I'd love to do a little bit of a recap on what is the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. So the toolkit is a collection of reusable framework agnostic components and auth provider that allows you to access and work with Microsoft Graph. So think about how you, you want to stop reinventing the wheel leverage some existing components that exist provided by um, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit team that connects to Microsoft 365 data and integrate them directly into your app, whether they are built with any framework, uh, React, Angular, Vue, jQuery, name it, any type of front-end framework, um, and also will work with any types of modern browsers, basically all the browsers we know today. So that's really kind of the, the value of what the Microsoft Graph Toolkit is all about. It helps you cut on dev time. You don't have to rebuild all of these functionalities to build a, a capability that goes on and fetches files based on a group ID or on a team ID or any of these things. And it's basically drag and drop inside your app. You don't really have to uh, build any big capabilities to include MGT in your app. They're beautiful. They're themed around Microsoft 365, so they really look native to the platform, but they're also very flexible. Think about how you might want to bring your own brand inside these controls. This is all absolutely possible. And it works everywhere. You want to work in SharePoint, you want to work in Teams, you want to work in Electron, you want to work just as a regular spa that is totally outside of these constructs you're more than welcome to bring MGT to any of the apps that you are building. So today we will be focusing on two components. The first component we're gonna talk about will be the file component. Think about how you wanna display a file card or a file representation of the data that lives in Microsoft 365. So that's gonna be the first component. That document or file can come from OneDrive or SharePoint or Teams, and they can also be either files or folder. But what we're also thinking about is how we can bring these multiple files together as part of the file list, bringing a total folder as part of it, or even building a full browsing capability with uh, files and folder to be able to navigate your OneDrive or to be able to navigate a group a uh, list of um, folders. Well, that's exactly what the MGT file list and MGT files are, and they work really, really closely together. So let me go to our uh, demo for today. Let me kill this presentation, and let me show you very quickly what we will be building today. So the first thing to note is we're going to start with the same HTML file that we've been using for the last couple of sessions, where we are identifying our provider, a provider that connects to an Azure Active Directory application that is used to secure our calls to Microsoft Graph. And in this specific case, we will be using four different scopes, permission scopes, to connect to Microsoft 365 data. The first one will be files.read, the second will be files.readwrite. The third will be files.read.all. And the finally, sites.read.all. Why do we need all of them? Files.read will give you access to your OneDrive, to your personal content. So files.read is really about the current user that is logged in. Files.readwrite, which actually, uh, we don't necessarily need files.read when we do that, but I love to have them all spread out. Um, files.readwrite will allow you to also add capabilities, add new files to something. And we're going to see how that is possible um, later on and how the power of the community is really where MGT stands out um, because some of these capabilities were actually built by the community. 
files.read.all that allows you to get files from all over your um, environment. And finally, size.read.all where you can actually read any sites anywhere. Um, that always takes into account the permissions that you have on these sites. So if you cannot see content, if you're not authorized to see content in a team or in a SharePoint site, you won't be able to see any of that content coming out. So what have we built? Well, what we built is a series of samples, and I will kind of highlight everywhere we have an MGD file. Um, I built it in a way uh, here that is a little bit more easy, uh, is easier for me to use to drive through the uh, uh, the demo. So that's why it's kind of in all these accordion, accordion items and all of that. But the things we have to focus on is these things. First one, an MGT file. The MGT file component takes in a file query. You can identify specifically which file you want to have access to which in that case is this file that could be coming from something you stored somewhere in your app. It could also be coming from another graph call where you wanted to see these files or whatever. You really decide what you want to do with these uh, queries. And once you have the query set, you will be able to have, for example, here, just a simple, it's going to bring in that specific file, which is slash me slash drive slash item. So this is a file that lives in my OneDrive that is an Excel file, automatically the component will be able to um, identify that it's an Excel file. It's going to add the right um, icon. We'll uh, put the name, uh, the date, and the size automatically in there. So that is kind of the simpler way, uh, the most simple way to use the file component. But something you can also do and I see some questions. I'm going to answer those as they uh, are happening uh, when I'm going to cover those or I'm going to cover them in the chat afterwards. But um, the next thing I want to show is maybe this layout here might be a little bit too uh, too noisy. Maybe in your app, you don't have that much space that you can allow to a single file. So you want to change the way that the presentation is done. So you have ways to identify the same file with the same file query, but with changing the view, one line, two lines, three lines. These three options are actually options on the MGT file. And you're going to see later, we're going to be able to control these also through the MGT file list. So what does it look like? Well, we're going to have a more compact here, a little bit less, and more like the bigger capability right here. So all of these controls are available like this. So you can literally choose out of the box three different views in here. You also can overwrite the entire view of it and run with your own template here. We're giving you the full object, the full file object, and you can render it the way you want it to do. That way, you will be able to use any uh, capabilities, any HTML tags, any React components to render it and really render it the way you want it to be. Then afterwards, you can also, for example, if you're connecting to either an internal system or you really want to uh, provide your own icon, there are ways to do that. So you can uh, simply specify a file icon. Here, I'm just referring to a PNG file that is stored in our repo. And when I do this here, it's just going to show up with the graph icon. So maybe you want to do your own logic. Maybe you want to uh, provide your own specific file icons that are part of your brand that are part of your the way that you want to represent files. You can also identify, OK, I want a specific drive ID. Drives are the construct of document libraries across all of Microsoft 365. OneDrive is a drive. A SharePoint document library is a drive. So basically here, if you know exactly which drives you're looking for, each of them has a unique ID. So you can simply just say, hey, you know what? I want to have um, this file right here, this drive, and I want to have this item ID within it. Or I can also use the item, the item path. So I don't have to know exactly the ID. I can actually use just the name uh, of the path. So basically a folder or the name of the file. And that's going to make us uh, successful by being able to see these. And there, so we're showing two different MGT files in this specific case. You can do the same thing with group ID. So think about how you want to integrate with Teams potentially. 
These group IDs are the same as the team ID. So you can go fetch for all the joint teams that you're a part of, identify the one you want to talk about. So a good example of this would have been to integrate with a team's channel picker that we uh, discussed earlier. Based on the results of that, we could have feed the information in here and select a single file from there. And then it shows here two different ways of showing the same file, either through the ID or through the item path. Then we can also do this using user ID. And that's how um, you can even go inside some users shared areas. Think about maybe a colleague shared a folder with you from their OneDrive. You can use the exact same capability here. So you can say, I, I want to connect to this user ID and that person gave me access to this specific item ID or this specific file. So now you can go here and see, hey, this is exactly, that. that's Megan. So I just added an MGT person right here just to showcase that we're actually connecting to uh, Megan and not to my own Sebastian's OneDrive. And I can see all the different files that are being available as part of it. Um, you might not like this experience. Maybe the title, you don't want the title to be this one. You don't want the, the, the second line to be the modified, the size, um, or whatsoever. Something you can do is customize your property. So here you can say, the first one, actually, I want to have the last date time. The, 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 the second one, I want to have the size. And the third one, I want to have the name, which then looks like um, the following. Then we changed it all up. We modified these capabilities. So think about how you would be able to uh, even change totally what are the properties that you want to use. And that's a great way to really match the result that you're expecting from MGT to what your app should be showing in any of these apps. So there's, these are all different capabilities that are super, super, super useful for us. Last thing that I wanted to show for this one is this here. Here, as you can see, I have an MGT file, but I'm actually not even specifying any file, any query or whatsoever. What we're doing here is I just added an ID in here, and that ID is something that I'm using in JavaScript. I'm going to go and get that component, get the ID, and provide a file details directly to this one. So if we're looking a little bit down in the code, we have the ability here to say, hey, you know what? This custom file details that I have up top. Just fill it with this here. So it's a size, whatever size we want, whatever name we want in here. And then it's going to be able to render. So think about it. It could even integrate with line of business application data that is not even in Microsoft 365. It could be from um, another repository. And then you would have the rendering to be exactly the same as your Microsoft 365 data. So that's actually really, really, really cool for people. So if I go back here, now if I go here, I'm gonna see that I have my simple drive item, then I don't know exactly what's the type of that file. So I just show up um, using these um, document uh, placeholders and this is the, the, the size of the file. So a lot of capabilities exist with files and there's even more that you can do with files. But I think we're, it really shines is when you um, aggregate multiple files together within a file list. So let's go and see how we can uh, work with a file list. Well, the first file list is the most simple one. Look at here, MGT file list. How simple is that? That's just, give me a file list. That file list, when there's nothing configured to it, we're gonna automatically go and uh, integrate with your OneDrive. So here you see, I have my entire OneDrive right here. I have all my folders, all my files on my OneDrive. I can even click here and show more items. So here it, it is con completely configurable where you want to be able to highlight, okay, I want to have a page size of 50 items or five items or 25 items. You decide. And then we also built automatically the ex automatically expanding capability. So you just click on it and then it loads the rest of the content and appends it to the current control. By default, when you click on something, nothing happens. Though you can always hook your code to the item click here. That means you will be able to um, 
for example, to react to something that happened. I clicked on this folder. Maybe I want to change the root of my component, or I want to open it in a new tab to be able to see the file. We're going to see an example of that a little bit later, but I wanted to make sure that um, I was mentioning it. Second thing, well, I think it's fair to say that when we have a, a file list, we want to be able to upload something, right? So in that case, we're uploading to um, our OneDrive. And that's why we needed to have these read-write capabilities. So I can click on Upload Files and select my MGT announcement here. And automatically, it's going to upload. It's going to say that it's done. That's really, really cool. We also support, um, let me just quickly do this here. Uh, should actually be supporting this. If I do this, I also, I don't know if you see, but right now I just dragged and drop a file from another folder I have, drag and drop over here, and automatically these files are updated. When you're going to reload the component, automatically these files will go and be shown in their respective order. To do that, you just need to enable the file upload to be true, and that's it. You're good to go. Then afterwards, you can also do a specific query. You can say, hey, you know what? I want the query to be just the children of this item. So for example, this is a folder. So you can say the content of this folder, I want it to be um, added and to be showcased in here. So you could go to any document library, any site, any team, any OneDrive, and show the, the current uh, um, capabilities underneath. What you can also do is multiple queries. So you say, I want to have files coming from here, also coming from here, and also coming from here. So you can do all of these. That's really cool. So you can combine files from coming from multiple places, which in that case will say, that's a folder, mockups, and then this. So you will have the mixed capabilities in there. That's amazing because it really enables you to mash data together that are coming from multiple sources. A couple of other scenarios, same thing with group ID and item. So you have the exact same capability when you have a group and a path. So for example, think about teams. That would be a team and the general folder, which we see right here. We have the same thing with an insight type. So think about there's three different insights type, the trending, the shared, and the used in Microsoft 365. Or in that case, these are the latest files that I used as a user. These are all there. So for example, when you're building an experience where you have a, a, a file picker, you might want to start with this because this is where it's really useful because those are the files you use, like the latest one that you used. So it's great to start with these kind of files. Now you can also, and I saw a question around file extensions, well, file list allows you to do, hey, I just want to care about doc in Excel, Excel SX, for example. So here, these are the ones that are on my OneDrive that are uh, Excel and documents and Word documents. These are the only ones we're filtering out all the rest from here. Um, there are also ways to customize the views. So you can see that the item view is going to be one line, two lines, or three lines, the same way we did it earlier, but now it affects all the components that are being used as part of the capabilities. And here you see that we change the page size to have it a little bit smaller. Finally, I think this is uh, where it really shines, is all the capabilities that we have in uh, MGT file lists all combined together, where we're going to be able to build a full breadcrumb and, and navigation capabilities in there. So for example, if I go here, I have my files. And when I go to my DEX here, well, I'm going to see all the files from DEX. I can go back to files, can go to mockups. I have all of them right here. If for any reason I don't see, I don't have a data, I am able to override the template when there is no data. And that's going to automatically say, sorry, no files are available in this folder. And this is what's going to be rendered to the screen. So you have the ability to bring your own messaging, to bring your own, maybe even iconography in there. And how do we do that? Well, we just hook up right here to our different components. Here we have the MGT file list breadcrumb, which I named it. And we're doing just a little bit of logic right here, where we add the event listener to a click. And then if it, there's a detail, then we just change the capabilities, we change which 
folder is the root of the of the NGT file list component, and we do some uh, management around the breadcrumb item. So this also behaves good. And if not, I'm just going to window that open this file. So if I click here, automatically I, I'm just now in my OneDrive and I just saw that file. So you can really build the experience you want to really expand on your scenarios and really build the MGT file list component that you really need. So just as a recap, a couple of resources. If you want to go and in, in check the code that we use today, go to the aka.ms slash MGT slash sandbox. Have a look at all the other resources. And back to you, Vesa. Thank you, Seb. Really, really cool demo and a lot of, lot of cool stuff on accessing the files in, in OneDrive or in SharePoint or anywhere within the Microsoft 365. So really, really awesome stuff. Thank you.